First, we're, we're going to talk about S&P protocol breakdown. I had some protocol dumps I wanted to show you guys, but oh well. <laughs> well, we'll learn a little bit. Um, S&P has been around since the 80s. I, 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 like, there was a talk earlier today on replacing S&P version 3 with Tripwire, which is pretty cool. And the, the guy talks a lot about the same stuff I'm going to talk about, so I apologize for the overlap. But, you know, what can you do? Um, SNMP preceded SGMP, the simple gateway management protocol, was a lot of bullshit. We, uh, we, there's defined in RFCs, and, and, you know, they said, hey, we need a way to manage agents. You know, we need a way to ma manage network electronics in, in our infrastructure. So, what they did was they implemented a simple, simple protocol, um, which, which defined basically four different types of operations. Uh, consisting of get, set, you know, walk, blah, 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 and 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 what we have now is is a sort of a a, ma a management glue that that kind of uh, bonds every every enterprise like in infrastructure out there. The, the the only viable solution to talking to any 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 network electronics in bulk is SNMP. You, this is what Cisco pushes, this is what IBM pushes, everyone pushes this protocol as the way to, to, uh, to, to manage your infrastructure. And it's kind of, it's kind of a, a shitty thing because SNMP sucks from a security perspective. We, <laughs> SNMP version 1 had a, oh, hell yeah, just open that shit up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's talk. Okay, good. Now we could be in the on the same on the same wavelength, some visualness. I hope everyone here's been drinking, cause I have. <laughs> Woo! Let's get drunk afterwards too. I fell off a fence last night and I, I chipped my tooth and busted my nose. It's been a bad weekend, man. First night we were out here, we got arrested. If anyone here's a lawyer, dude, I seriously need some advice because I have to be back in Nevada on September fourth to to serve a court date for littering. What the fuck are the police thinking out here? Seriously, there's mobsters, there's prostitutes, but fuck, I was littering. Hey, who cares, right? So, anyway, I need advice. Um, anyway, let's talk about S&P some more. Is this, is this going all right? Shit. So, I mean, how many people here are come from an enterprise perspective? Woo! That's what I'm talking about. What is that? <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. Let's all we gotta do is hit Alt D. Just cancel that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or not? Damn, what am I talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just view, view. I you should see. That says view slides, right? <laughs> Fuck, man. What is going on? Woo! All right. So S&P protocol breakdown. Let's talk about S&P. We can do. Hell yeah. I'll drink to that. Anyway, we're going to talk some about s and I'm sure everyone's heard a little bit about it. A lot of hype in the past year. Um, we're going to talk about enterprise infrastructure. So. Okay, like I said, proceeded to SGMP, you know, was designed in order to manage electric, uh, network electronics, routers, printers, even Unix servers, a la, if any of you guys are EHAP, EHAP guys, www.toplistlolitas.com is a nice free BSD box with fucking SNMP agents running on it. I don't understand these sysadmins mentality. They pull their devices using SNMP in server farms and big, big managed infrastructures. And so, anyway, every SNMP conversation requires the communication of two entities. What we have through SNMP is something called a manager and an agent. Our, our agent exists on the, the device we're attempting to manage, be it a printer, router, anything. Um, our agents, which communicates to the to, to the network electronics, um, it's our, it's kind of our middleman. You know, it, he 
we talk to the agent in order to find out the status of the device. Temperature, processor utilization, blah, blah, blah. But we kind of get a little more involved when we start considering our agent also has the capability of modifying configuration and, and you know, adding on to the network electronics like via, via you could change IP addresses, possibly you could change passwords, security, security, you know, stuff. But, but like what we, what we can, what we can really do some damage with is when, when we, we know exactly what we're looking at, um, we have to know the hardware and we have to know what the hardware supports a la SNMP. So, uh, you know, SNMP transport mechanism is default over UDP. How many people here like UDP? UDP sucks, right? Come on. UDP is connectless, connectionless oriented transport protocol that does not require authentication, does not require a handshake, does not require our shit. It's, it's, it's a blind protocol. We send it, fuck, who cares if it gets there or not. So, here's some more boring stuff. SMI is, is, is the RFC, you know, that defined the structure of management information. And, and really what it did was said, hey, this is how, this sets the precedent. This is what we're going to, how we're going to talk about the language that, that manages network electronics. Um, it's, it's boring stuff, and it's called abstract, abs, abstract syntactical notation, version one. You guys may have encountered this in, you know, your directory structures such as LDAP, or I, I heard uh, uh, some mail transfer protocol was, was using the same thing, but I don't care. MIBs, MIBs are the definition of, of uh, they're what SMI defines, basically. When you look at a MIB, you're not looking at anything fancy, you're looking at a text file that says, hey, this is what our agent does for us. And so, so our MIBs are our life. When we're talking about network electronics, we want to attack or we want to do something with, the MIBs are the first thing we go to and we say, hey, this, this if whatever the support by, we download the MIBs and we say, we have to look through all of them and, and figure out what exactly these MIBs can do for us. Because the MIBs are, are, are basically, they define what we can do with SNMP and what we can't do. Um, you know, and, and the protocol itself, was defined in RFC 1157, blah, blah, blah. What we have to understand is when we're talking, when we're talking in the context of SNMP, we, we're talking about some dumb ass definitions that get really, I mean, IETF and all that stuff, you know, they, they, they're very formal and, 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 you know, you have to respect them for that because they're the, they're the, they are what gives us the capability to have the internet and stuff like that. So, but the, the process is formalized this protocol that's really simple and giving it a lot of addendums and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it kind of gets complex, even when we're talking about four operations in version one. So, so we have to get our terminology down. And the thing is, the terminology changes a little from vendor to vendor, but we're all used to that, right? So, in, in SNMP. Because you need one. Yeah, please. Um, I'll change to that. In SNMP, the way we have structured our information is is through the the object identifiers it, using an abstract abstract syntactical notation, and it's a tree-like structure, just like anything else. You guys want no value? You guys want Active Directory? Same thing. Tree. You know, we start at our root, we go down. All these organizations have registered, you know, and and blah blah blah, and goes gets down. The most important thing we have to deal with is MIB2. Every single SNMP enabled device in the world supports MIB2 as of now. I mean, it's a pretty bold claim, but I swear to God it's true. You know, MIB2 is, is, is what we use to talk to interfaces on, we can talk to interfaces on a server. MIB2 is supported by Windows boxes, it's supported by Unix boxes, whatever. We, we love MIB2. MIB2 is how we get the most information. Especially from a management perspective when we're doing protocol baselines and stuff like that. MIB2 is how we get um, uh, our, our 
the util utilization of our interface and stuff like that. But it also defines interfaces. Interfaces come become really important later. So whenever you want to talk to an SNP enabled device, you just work your way down the tree. Most of it's, you know, independent of of the vendor that the, the device is made by. But you get into what's called the private, the the, the private leaf. And the private's where you're your 3Com, your, your proprietary Cisco 3Com, Linksys, all that stuff is. And, and they let you do some pretty funky stuff. So just research that. Um, our security fund. Security issues are not discussed in this memo, RFC 1157. That sets the precedence for SNMP security, basically. Our passwords are, we don't even have a user password based mechanism for authenticating devices. What we have is community strings. That until SMP version 3, all we had was a single word that let us, gave us any kind of access we want to on a network electronic. So, so basically all we have to do is, is <laughs> get access to the management VLAN of the enterprise and, and look at one single packet that, 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 that their management station is, is polling their devices with and we have access to their infrastructure. It's, it's really easy. I mean, like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of, you know, documentation out there on securing your management inter infrastructure, but in reality, this isn't a viable solution for, uh, from a, like a bureaucratic perspective because our managers have more pull, more pull than our security personnel. Everyone knows that, right? Our, the people who give us money for you know, supporting our, our, our network say, hey, we like pretty graphs. We like things we can see. If a security guy does his job right, you don't see shit. You just see your network working. If a management guy does his job right, he says, here you go, man. Here's, here's all these green graphs. And you know, this, is what our network, this is what our network looks like at, at this time of day. This is, we're, you know, they, they define how our quality service agreements are, are, are working with our ISPs and shit like that. So managers have a lot more pull than security people, especially in like a segregated environment where there's all that bureaucracy going on. So our, our, our managed policies take precedence over our security policies. And this, this gets really crazy. This, this, this lets us attack networks that are huge. So four simple operations. This is the SMB version one. This is the first the first protocol, you know, transport mechanism that we, we're going to talk about. And basically what we have is a git. We, we ask our agent for a specific, you know, thing about the device. We say, hey, how are you doing today? Are you, uh, are you sad? Are you happy? How's your temperature? We say, how's your processor utilization? We just send a git packet. We don't care if it gets there or not. We'll send it again. It's UDP. Then we have our set. Sets, what we use to attack. Our sets are, are the mechanism in which we compromise networks with. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And traps, traps are what our agents do for us. This is how management infrastructure lives, is through traps and, and something else called inform, which is a more formal trap. Um, our traps will get us, will tell us, tell us our network is behaving a certain way based on thresholds and, and uh, stuff we've defined on the agent. And uh, our git next just says, hey, after you get this, get this value after this specific OID, which is the OID is, is the part in the tree, is the numbers in the tree. Here's a protocol dump. Um, as you can see, what I did here, I plugged into a campus network, sat down with my fun little Toshiba laptop that doesn't work for shit, and said, hey, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to watch. I was, I was on a student VLAN, and they were passing SMP traffic back and forth. You know, hey, this is what community stream we're using. And it was a set request. It was so cool. I was just like, thank you. You know, we can, we can, we have, this is probably one of the biggest universities in Southern California, and we have access to anything we want to on their, on their network. And basically this is our, you know, the, kind of a formalized packet. We have two parts, the message header and the protocol datagram unit. Or, you know, and we, we just, in our packet, we have our version numbers, our community string as the header. And our PDU is really the meat. We're going to talk a little bit about PDUs more because um, 
when we're when we're attacking in the blind, which is basically every time you're going to attack using SMP, you're going you're not going to know how the agent responds from from a managed perspective. So we're talking about man in the middle attacks, sending SMP packets, and and seeing what happens. Our error codes are very important. So so our error status is is where we learn to attack, uh, where we learn how our attack has 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 you know been been a implemented in the agent and there's other stuff request ID PDU type but just you know package structure so and then we move on to SMP version 2 and really the only the only there's three versions of SMP version 2 defined in RFCs and and the thing was nobody liked the way it was performing they, they defined management they, they defined like security but it didn't work out, you know, just because it's the law of proprietary, proprietary stuff was was sort of pushing over all these other people, and and we had what's called SP version two C, which is the same exact thing as SP version one, at s same security mechanisms, community strings. That's it. The only thing that's different is is our, our error codes and sort of the protocol operation. It's but you know we. <laughs> When we attack an SMP version one enabled agent or an SMP version two enabled agent, same thing. You know, no difference. SMP version three is what we have to to worry about. Um, our error codes are here. You know, probably the most important error for you guys is to look for is called a bad value. When you get a bad value back from an agent. Um, He's gonna tell you. He's telling you that 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 specific operation you 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 try to tell him to do is not working, and this applies totally in the context of sets. When you try and set something, and 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 that type of set 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 value doesn't is not, he's not capable of doing. He's gonna tell you bad value, man. Sorry, I'm not accepting this. And, and see, sets are a shitty thing because a lot of times, like in, in our MIBs, we have to we have to set other things. We have to send sets to other parts of the MIB before we can set certain certain you know other things. Like, for instance, uh, our, our favorite MIB from a management perspective is called Armon, or Remote Monitoring MIB, and that lets us do alarms and stuff like that. We aren't allowed to modify our Armon table until we've we've set the, the the operational status of the Armand MIB, such as trap, such as it's it's by default on on most devices um, user defined, but in order to, to edit it, we have to say we have to set that to to code three, which is uh, MIB in progress or something like that. But it's it's like it's a lot of BS, but. <laughs> SNMP version two, more error codes, and this this gives us error codes are what give us our fingerprinting capabilities. We have to listen to error codes when we're attacking a managed network because they tell us, especially when we don't have the ability to to know what we're we don't have the ability to know how how our our stuff's performing ahead of time. Shit. <laughs> exactly. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Neither, huh? I didn't pray to Allah today. He's upset. Seriously. But, okay, so let's move on without the fancy pictures. Um, so what were we talking about? Air codes? Drinking. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. All right, let's get to something interesting, because this is just killing me, and I'm talking. <laughs> um, okay, S&P version 3. It's all the talk these days, right? You know, oh shit, authenticated management protocol. Ooh, you know, deep by default, 56-bit key, DS key space. Wow. No, you know, S&P version 3, the way it's implemented in enterprise, you know, you have to know what you're doing. Like, 
very well. You have to come from a security background, or else it's just not viable. It's a lot of work, and managers don't do this. this seriously, I, I, I swear, I come from a managed consulting background. I, I do, you know, big stuff for big companies and see how their infrastructure is working, and and they just don't like to. It's 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 so much work, and the reason why is. And SMB Vision 3 took a whole new thing. They said, hey, we need security. We need, we need a way to authenticate messages and conversations. We also need to encrypt our data. So what they did was they defined something called the user management model, which is an RFC 2574. Um, and, it can, and all SMB diagrams consist of three parts. It's called message global data, which is our header, our message security parameters, which is our life and message data, which is our, 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 our the part of it, like our variable bindings and stuff like that. So, our message security parameters are how we define how we're going to authenticate. By default, SNMP version three still, even if we if even if we enable it on our device, we still have to define a way we can talk using it, and we have to define users. We have to define the contexts when the users are allowed to talk to our devices, and we have to bind it to a specific SNMP engine. That the engine is what 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 com when when computed with the hash gives us our, our and our passphrase gives us our encrypted key. So, so we need to we need to do a lot of stuff in order to get this infrastructure up and running, and and so let's say. We're looking at a network with with tight security. Um, we got we got managed devices talking only SMP version three with enc encrypted authentication and in, in, encrypted data. You know, the handshake, everything's going on, and we're like, we can't we can't sniff it, we can't do anything. How are we going to compromise this network? The 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 main point of our attack. Needs to be at the user, the user systems table or USM. You know, it's 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 in it's, it resides on the agent. It's, it gets kind of fuzzy here because like it's not it's it's it, it's weird. It's not an SNMP enabled like entity or or or, or terminology. It exists at SNMP. We can't talk to our USM table with SNMP. It's, it's defined in the RFC. So what we have to do is we have to circumvent this, meaning we have to attack our router using different, different, different methodologies, i.e., you know, you know, breaking uh, our, our, our the, the, the protocol structure such as attack us plus, you know, faking handshakes, stuff like that. So that's when we start. Look, that's when we start attacking the entire infrastructure. And with SNP version three. We we don't have uh, too many options as of now, except from an exploitable perspective. Um, recently, there was there was there was uh, uh, these guys from uh, the Oulu University published what's called the Protus Test Suite, right? And the test suite was was attacking um, it was it was doing SNP injection of you know specific PDUs on. Uh, on version one of the protocol, and they're doing agent overflowing and stuff like that. You know, exploiting viable buffer overflows. Isn't that on ASM one? I, mean, I thought that was an actual attack on ASM one, on which um, SNMP resides. Right. Well, I thought, I thought ASM one was kind of the, the weak link, and that all these other protocols are on top. No. no. Well, see, ASM one. Is, is the way we define our hierarchy of the way we define our, our MIBs. It's the it's only it's only a way of like our, our agents exist in they don't know about ASN one. Right. They exist independently. The Protoss test suite was attacking the way agents interpreted data, regardless of the way the data was sent. They were sending, you know with most of our with most of our um, our definitions, which I kinda wanted to show you, um, there was like we define in ASN this this specific OID has read write access has you know it's a string type or it's an integer it's a gauge blah 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 so what we can do is is say 
hey, we could try and overflow the string. It, it only takes so many, you know, so many characters before it breaks. And with the agents the, that existed on, on that device, certain ones didn't know how to handle the overflow and stuff like that. So that's the way from like a, like a strictly codable and like, like you know, you know, uh, you know, perspective of, of, of attacking using like exploits where we, we have to use a purpose test suite and, and, and the ideas they've given us because they, they, did a, they did a lot of work and they did a really good job. Um, as, as far as, see, the, the, the big misconception is, is that, that, that somehow MIBs and abstract syntact no, and syntactical no, notation, all that stuff is all tied together. But, but it, it's, it's, n it's not true. Like it, we can talk, as long as we can send a packet to these people, they don't care what, what it is. The, the way they interpret it is, is going to be the thing that, that makes us break or, you know, not the, the system. But, like, and let me talk a little bit more about MIBs. MIBs are just a database of managed objects that the agent monitors and manipulates. It, it's a way of us thinking about the database of managed objects. The SMI provides a way to define using a ASN. And what we need to do when we're looking at our, the MIBs we, we want to exploit is, is um, we need to get a MIB compiler, because they do the work for us. So, you know, probably your best bet as far as, as tools goes is uh, NetSNMP. Um, it's awesome, awesome. It's just a programming library. There's all kinds of extensions, and everyone's writing, writing for it. Like, they're doing a great job keeping it up to date and patching it and anything like that. And it supports SNMP version 3. So we could do a lot with it. It's a, it's a little less... Uh, Less, you know, user friendly than your your standard management like interfaces, but we don't care about that. We're we're trying to break into systems. We're not trying to look pretty. So, and here's here's kind of what I want to show you about MIBs examples, but but oh well. So, what we want to do when we're trying to attack something is is we want to <laughs> exactly. We want to we want to talk about Ocean's Eleven a little bit. Have you guys ever seen the movie Ocean's Eleven? The original, or the shitty remake. The shitty remake with Brad Pitt <laughs> and George Clooney. What did they do in Ocean's Eleven? They robbed three casinos, and the way they did it was <laughs> they built the same vault as the casino did. Right? They from the ground up, they did everything ahead of time. When we're breaking into a network. And we want to we want to use managed protocols as our attack you know our attack vector. We want to know we want to know exactly how these attacks are correlated in the environment and responded to. So the more you can get the, the if you could write your own agent that responds just like that, you know uh, the the more stuff you can get that that is an analog to the network, the better off you are. Just like in Notions Eleven. Y because if not, we're going to be attacking in the blind. It's just going to be like hijacking a TCP session. We're not going to know what the fuck's going on. We're just going to have to say, hey, let's try it, you know, sequence numbers and everything. But, like, so, and, and the thing is, there's so much information out there because vendors want their devices to be easy to manage. So, we can, we, we, we use that, we use our MIBs, we use our compilers, we use our tools. We set up an environment that emulates this type of network, and we say, "Hey, let's let's go out." When we're inside a network, we want to look for two things: traps and informs. Traps are one-way, you know, dumps of what's going on on the network, and and those are what tells us the most about the information. Those tells those tells us two key things: the trust relationship on the management network, and and where we need to look to, to break the management sector. Traps will always be sent to a management station that basically manages the entire network or, you know, a segment of it. So, when we look at the trap, we're going to try and identify where it's going and what's, what it contains. Traps usually, by default, contain same community strings that um, other networks 
the other, the managed devices communicate. It's not a two-way thing, but people implement like a two, like a like a symmetric like, you know, like conversation. It's not. You don't need the same communi community strings to talk back to your network management station that you do to, to ask it questions. So, so that's what we're looking for. The informs are a little more formal. It's a way of of um, being. Making sure your trap has gotten there. It's just a handshake saying, hey, I got this message. The only time informs are not going to work is when your network goes down and when you can't get your, your datagram to the device. So, yeah, Cisco. Oh. <laughs> or system disk error. Our favorite SNMP tools. Scripts. Two different scripts. Uh, two, just Scripting stuff is net SNMP, which I already talked about, which is the best. Good stuff. Go get it if you like SNMP. Also, we have the Tickle, TLK, and Scotty, which is the interpreted language. It's super simple. It's a really cool language, dude. And we run it. We, we, it's, it has a lot of potential as, as just being simple, robust. We can do what we want with it with you know complex polling and um, search methods. The next best thing... The, the thing that's our life, if we're going after a network with, net, with, with SNMP as, as our attack vector, is sniffers. We have to use sniffers. Even if the data is encrypted, the sniffers are going to tell us everything we need to know of, of the hier hierarchy and the topology, stuff like that. So, and, and that's the thing. That's, that's kind of what's appealing about using this to attack uh, networks is, is it's unintrusive. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to install back doors. We don't have to, you know, compromise it, like file servers, anything like that. We use what what the networks have implemented already. They don't know we're there if we do this right. They can't. Intrusion detection. If if we if we're using the trust relationship on a managed VLAN, intrusion detection doesn't mean shit. You know, we exploit the way these 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 um these devices exist in the hierarchy. The next best thing is if we're attacking blindly, we have to brute force our community strings. The problem with that is if they're they're doing trap handling right, they're gonna they're gonna set traps back to network management station saying the authentication failed, this person's trying to brute force. So we have to think of creative ways to, to attempt using, you know, really long uh, um, um, changes in in, uh, in in timing and stuff like that. So it, it's uh, brute forces are sloppy. Um, and like 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 I was talking about earlier, the Protoss test suite is is kind of the, it's 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 in Java in compiled files, and and we have to do like we we have to. <laughs> what's going on? But Protoss test suite, whatever. Armon, let's talk a little bit more about Armon as an unintrusive packet sniffer. We can have network electronics that support the Armon MIB let us sniff packets on their network without them knowing about it, if we do it right. So what we have to do is, is we, have to, we have to send, on Cisco devices they require exec access as the command line to enable Armon, like sniffing. So <laughs> that's one one of the key things in, in getting an arm on you know mid to, to tell you stuff is compromising a Cisco router and by then you're like hey but other network electronics are are more more susceptible to arm on attacks and we have to look for two two key things in the in the in the tree uh, our our filter and our capture tables we implement our filter and capture table using our, our PDUs and it'll set up an interface that's, that resides in pr pr promiscuous mode and will iterate all the data. Um, the PDUs that pass the filter test are then forwarded to the capture buffer table. To set up the data channel, a vacant index must be, be, be determined, which is our, which is our interfaces. Um, the channel status attribute to create requests... Oh, shit. Yeah, but anyway, basically we have to do look for two things in your online mid, the filter and capture groups, and, and from there read it and it's it's straightforward. We and, and this way we install a sniffer on major hardware that that will like like for example, a company's sixty five oh nine. Their 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 land switch 
enables us to look at all traffic passing across its interfaces, just using SNMP. Um, that's the competent managers. They'll be able to find out what's going on and what's not. Um, they'll, they'll see. I need a. Do we have another? My battery's dying. <laughs> Skydiving. This is fear and loathing in Las Vegas, right? <laughs> so anyway, Arm, we like Armand. Armand's very good. We can we can break a lot of stuff with it. And Armand is also the way we make a lot of money if we're interested in managing because managers love Armand. It tells us every way. It tells us our top talkers, host top end, stuff like that. It's what does our traps and and Armand. Like the, the thing about Armand, it's it's still a MIB. It's still like S and MP. The only thing is. When they define the RFC, they define mat matrixy style like architecture, which was like a big thing back then because they were doing like you know straightforward you know tables. So it's it's it's, it's it, it was it was like kind of a kind of a a step forward in the management world. So uh, we want to talk about reconnaissance. How when we we're, we're looking at a network and we want to break it, what are we gonna do? From an S and P perspective, we want to identify the network first. Big thing is the 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 access lists. All right, access de list detection from S and S and P perspective sucks because when we're using version one, version two, and we're sending our packets, we're going to get the same response from an ac access access list device as we would if we were using the wrong community string. So this is where sniffing comes in. And this is where, where our, uh, woo, oh, hi there. So, so, the. Can anybody <laughs> see? Microsoft. Hey, so the best way we're we're going to get into a network. Is um um uh hmm. ah. So when we get into a network. The best bet is, is is through the DMZ because our DMZ is typically typically not managed correctly. Either they're letting in, they're, they're not, they don't have the proper ingress filtering and stuff like that. So, so we're the way we want to do is is go after a host in the DMZ, you know, be it a web server, you know, or anything like that, and and that will give us the trusted capabilities in inside the network using SNMP because. I wish I had that fucking picture, but I forgot to write it. I was drunk. So basically, our like, like uh, let's say our firewall it has segmented the MZ from the, the the private network, and you know they're doing that. They're doing all kinds of great stuff. Managers will enable SNMP protocol passes from the DMZ to the private segment. They're, they, it, no, no implementation of a firewall is going to let SMB traffic pass from the from the outside inside. It's just not a it's it's not a real real situation you're going to find in the wild. So, but from the DMZ, it's different. I've seen it. So look there first. If you can't get there, then the only other thing is you got to get internal access. And um, our internal access comes from another way, you know, another way, social engineering. I don't need to describe that to you. Everyone here is pretty much educating that. Once inside, we have to attack the management VLAN. Normally, our management VLAN, VLAN suck, right? I mean, they're not, they're not secure by any means, even in like the most standard of Im impl implementations. We're, <laughs> we're looking at a, a, a VLAN that will, we'll, if they do it right, they're not going to let you route. They're not going to. They're not going to let you route between a, a, a management VLAN and and you know a student one or whatever else they got. So, so it, that doesn't mean crap though. It, it's 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 easy to get around. And 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 what the hell is this? 
What's going on here? SNMP is also a great way to transport viruses. <laughs> Just kidding. And I don't know how to use what does this What the fuck? I hit Yeah. Extreme prejudice, baby. Oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> when is SNMP a viable attack mechanism? <laughs> Not when we want to deplace web pages, people. Like deface, replace, whatever. We're not going to replace index.htm with SNMP. It, it's out there. Toplessloadies.com, you have people. But we want to we wanna look at <laughs> ways of compromising networks, not ways of compromising web servers, all right? Um, we, we're not going to... If you can run a nice appy overflow, great. It's a lot easier. SNMP takes a lot of work. Um, when we, this is the, the key thing. When we have ways of communicating properly to network electronics, and keep in mind, did, you, did anybody see that, uh, the, the talk on, um, on printers and, and, and stuff like that? Overflows using CDP. That was great. That will give you a great perspective on how we can compromise a major network. We can, we can look at printers. We can look at UPSs with smart management cards. We can look at, you know, any type of network electronic that has SNP agents enabled on it. And there's, it's, it's everywhere. So. So what we have to do is we have to get creative and we have to look at um, jet direct cards and we say, hey, we can compromise jet, jet direct cards and exploit the trust relationship between jet direct managers and the jet direct printers. We can compromise UPSs the same way. Um, and it's, it's super easy. Like, and that talk was really awesome. And I have to give that guy a lot of respect, but I don't know who he is. So. SNMP has a tool for attacking reconnaissance. SNMP lets us take over an entire network, given the conditions are met, just like everything else. SNMP can give us complete access to their infrastructure, and it will belong to us. But we have to know a few key things, community strings, what type of agents are running, and more importantly, the, the management hierarchy, which I think is coming up. So ne network management. So these are the key protocols we see in a network. Um, network management is basically the way of, of, you know, managing large amounts of network electronics. If you have a, a, a network with 10,000 nodes and 300 plus routers, you're not going to be able to go out to every single one and say, hey, what's your MAC address? So we have to, we have to, we have to centralize our, our, our way of querying these things, and this is where network management servers come in, and also our network management protocols, SNMP being number one, and then we have like stuff like syslog and Cisco D discovery protocol, and you know the, the the network time protocol and all that stuff. So um, NTP, it, it, NTP is is a management protocol we can we can look at to maybe maybe get a little more. Uh, you know, slide in under and under like the the the, the normal the normal ways of uh, what they're looking at, like from a security perspective. So NTP is all it does is synchronize time between electronics, and it normally goes outside to do that. One of those big university like atomic clocks, and so and so there's ways of authenticating it, but it's normally not authenticated. Like it's 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 it, because it's so simple. So it's a way of communicating to our major routers who synchronize time on their LAN slash WAN and, and, and we have to, if, if we can't do other, if we, we have no other mechanism, NTP is a way to go. So, CDP, Jesus Christ, CDP is like, oh my God, one of the craziest protocols I've ever seen in my life. Dude, those guys who gave a talk, talked about exploiting Cisco ISs, they're writing to the kernel you know, using CDP as, as their attack vector. It was, it was insane. CDP is so fucking informative that, that we can know everything about a network just by sticking our laptop on one of the ports and saying, hey, look, they're, they're just, they're just, watch. 
Here's our CDP protocol dump. Okay, you guys can't see that, but oh well. This is this is basically a device telling a 6509, hey, this is what kind of so this is what software version I'm running. This is where I am. This is how I work. Talk back to me. I miss you. So the CDP CDP is 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 the it's it's the glue that binds Cisco devices. And and if you guys ever seen uh, Jeremy Roth's talk, he's he did a lot of this stuff. So I don't want to get into like you know like you know this type of like security mechanisms because we can authenticate CDP and we can do stuff with it but by default same as all the other protocols it's it's it, it's like it's almost broadcast over their land saying hey this is what we do the the typical thing managers do or security people do is, is segment this by VLAN but you know we can get around that um, syslog too syslog is you know it's our favorite thing centralizes logging and 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 it's it's <laughs> we're met, we're, what a lot of people don't understand is syslog is not a way to get to receive traps syslog is is um is sort of the log server it's what what happens to our network electronics when we need to log something a single event a trap querying is a completely different thing but these both these two things are are uh, are, are kind of in the same analog because we can we can exploit the trust between syslog and traps and stuff like that just like anything else and typically when a server is is, is like a syslog server uh, like any of these servers are running multiple services and this is what we need to identify is that is that we these management servers are so susceptible to attacks and and they're they're, they're wide open as long as we can compromise the VLAN they they are easily the most attackable piece device on the network just because they have to get so much information from the rest of the network and when we're talking about in the the enterprise context there's a shitload of information so what are we going to do to to help out our infrastructure we're going to implement access lists we're going to we're going to segregate traffic by vlan which should prevent sniffing but it really doesn't and we're going to we hopefully filter management traffic at the firewall and, and at the firewalls. If you if you want to do it right, you know, do intrusion detection in your VLAN. Do do you know uh, firewalling in your VLAN as well as the rest of your network. You gotta you gotta. This is the this is the part of the, your, your network that owns the rest of your network. So we have to we have to pay very like a lot of attention to this. And 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 the, the thing is, it, it's not giving too much. Too much of uh, uh, perspective, or whatever the word is. I'm drunk. <laughs> so TACAS Plus, TACAS Plus. We like TACAS Plus. This is the way we authenticate managed devices. TACAS Plus is pretty cool. It's better than Radius, but it, it's 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 susceptible to uh, uh, replay. replay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But you know, yeah, the, the TagS Plus, just like any other implementations, is is not that well authenticated. Replay attacks are a way to get into TagS Plus, you know, enable networks. Um, um, TagS Plus is over TCP, Radius is over UDP. So you guys know the difference. It's 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 like if we're looking outside, you know, like from the outside, TagS Plus is is not going to be a viable way to get in. Radius is not going to be a viable way to get in. You're going to have to be creative and look at the, the DMZ first. But when we do get in, we want to pay attention to, you know, the AAA authentication stuff. We want to pay attention to what's going on because this is the management hierarchy we are attacking. So, the, and and here's more. You know, and 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 like 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 everything else, this is usually centralized over. The, the the specific areas of the network using something like Cisco Secure, you know, Access Control Server. But <laughs> Access Control Server is just like everything else. We can break it through it just using um, watching the way in which the the the, the, ma the network is managed. And this is kind of what I'm trying to get across to everybody: is the way in which people manage networks also tells us the way in which we can break into it. So, um, and uh, like our network management security is kind of a joke 
We have we have our we have our you know fifty thousand dollars solutions that let us pull you know hundreds of devices, open views, you know, number one, Cisco Works, all that stuff, Tivoli, Unicenter. And these things these things are running a shitload of services and a shitload of just unneeded stuff. Like like you look at you look at like a HPU Xbox with OpenView on it, you do, you run N Nmap against it, you'll see like fuck like like fifteen ports open. It's it's a joke. Like and and the way we can get into the server is is there's there's too many ways. Like it's it's too possible. Like we have the Protoss test suite as a, as an SNMP attack vector. We also have we we also have you know our replay attacks and stuff like that. So what we could do is 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 we we wanna we wanna break into these servers. We can. All we need to know is where they are and how to talk to them. And that's the sniffing part. And I think I'm done. So, anybody have any questions? <laughs> questions, comments? Is Shakira in the crowd? I kind of want to talk to her. Yeah, what, what did you litter? I'm very curious. Porn. We were throwing porn at cars. Oh, man, you got yeah, it was crazy. But we, 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 you know, because there's too much porn in Las Vegas. I just kind of want, I want to spread the word, you know, because I didn't think the cars were getting enough porn. So. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is a good question. Um, well, see, because NTP, N uh, NTP assumes a, a, a it's trust relationship, right? We're asking a a specific de device outside of our network to, to centralize our time. So, so if if we set up a bogus NTP server, there's there's issues. It's more of like a like a DOS thing. Like if we set up improper timing. When we try and synchronize with our timing, there, there's issues that come 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 up uh, come up when we uh, when when our, when our processor does like like the, like the, the timing like stuff. So it it, it kind of breaks breaks um, a router architecture and sort of removes the device from the network. Um, that's the only thing I've seen. I've heard there's other ways. It's more of, it's more of the trust relationship. It gives us a way to communicate to our network electronics and sort of fingerprint. What we're talking to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's why. Yeah, and that's why NTP authentication is like the most important, like managed um, protocol because it's it's something that's coming from outside our network. So we we have to look at. Uh, it should be key. Anything that's talking to our devices and telling us synchronization information. Is 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 the most important thing because it, it tells us how our devices are supposed to perform. Perform. Right. But you have to go pick one. Your device won't just go out there and say, "Hey, I, there's an there's an automated NTP server out there." You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, you know, <laughs> right. 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 Well, yeah, and it's 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 time. Obviously, it's not like that that big of an issue on your network. The thing is, it gives us potential for for you know denial of service and stuff like that. That's the reason I mentioned it. It's not it's not like it's not a it's not a pr practical attack you see in the wild. It's not. It's 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 kind of worthless. But but it, it's a it's a management protocol just like all the others. And so. Oh really? Yeah. See, there you go. 
Yeah, it's it's not it, the synchronization is key in, in inside because when you when you're your your master router doing you know hopefully doing redundant NTP like uh, polling and stuff like that is pushing out times to the rest of your the rest to your edge like the rest of your switches and stuff like that it's it screws everything up like what if your servers aren't, aren't synchronized the same thing as your as your as your uh, uh, your managed electronics then like I mean it, it, things don't work correctly so I don't know it's it's fun stuff any other questions too much, but I want some more. So if anyone wants to go party, <laughs> Shakira especially. Well, porn, right? Casa, or where in Las Vegas? Let's just go walk down the street, man. And I'll find some porn. And you know, I just want to give a shout out to the Muppet Babies. They're, they're like an extinct species almost, they're endangered, so we need to look out for the mother babies. No, they're all good, trust me. We love them. <laughs> but anyway, it's the last talk of the day, so, so I hope everyone had a good time. And let's party. And let's do math. Analytic number theory.